if John doesn't subscribe. Prehistoric Kingdom is one of the best dinosaur games of all time. Unfortunately, it hasn't gotten much playtime out of the community. This is due to two main reasons. One, a lot of people struggle with the modular building. For them, it's just not their cup of tea. However, the second reason comes to, with time. A lot of people think that the modular building system inherently means that it will take an extremely long time to build anything significant in Prehistoric Kingdom. Today, I'm going to prove that wrong, and that Prehistoric Kingdom is a great game and you should play it, because in just three weeks and 24 hours in the save file, I built a zoo in Prehistoric Kingdom containing a large portion of the species in the game. Today, we're going to tour that. Hello everyone, welcome to Jurassic Africa with a perfectly made sign. Nothing wrong with it, this park wasn't rushed, as I already said in the intro. Um, so yeah, let's walk through this queue into the entrance area for this zoo. It wouldn't be a very large zoo, so I imagine there would be a small parking lot, but it's fine to just have people go through this one entrance building. Not really an issue. So, yeah, welcome. Uh, we just have our ticket booth here before we get to the first area. So, uh, here, you can go ahead and look at the dialogues I'll talk while I talk for a second. So this is themed after different African biomes. Uh, from around the continent because they're known Africa's the continent that's known for having super cool megafauna and this environment so this is just an early look into the Dilo we'll actually circle all the way back around and get a better view at them later but uh yeah we'll go ahead and walk into the zoo and as I've said the zoo is pretty lazily built that's a side effect of the speed at which I built it however um, I did do a thing where basically parts of the zoo still look under construction, so it's like there would be more zoo in the distance. So right when you get into the Sahara section, we have this big open valley here surrounded by rocks. I was trying to make this look very natural. I should probably have deleted these temper trees that are still in the background, but oh well. And in here we have a bunch of Oranosaurus running around. I would click on one, but I don't want Nigel to start talking, so uh, you'll see them in the cinematic shots that I might overlay. So what's this thing on our left? You'll see these in a lot of zoos, especially like because people go to the zoo in the summer and it gets really hot. They have like these machines that spray like steam. Not steam. That would be very counterintuitive. Mist to um, cool down the guests. So yeah, that's what that is. Also, I don't know if you guys saw this, each section has its own sign. Why is there this type of cactus in the Sahara? I don't know. Uh, mostly I tried to use the trees from the area though. So this is a fountain. The water has disappeared. I placed the water trough like how Jurassic did it, which was a cool idea. But um, So we can head this way, but we're going to walk into this building first. As you can see, very sparsely decorated, but it serves its function mostly. And what we have here on the left is two miniature habitats, well, three miniature habitats. Starting here with the uh, Sitakosaurus habitat. They have these little shelters. They do look a little bit small now that I look at them for the Sitakos to fit inside, but I think they could curl up in there, like one each. And that's just a neat idea. And I don't think they would need a ton of room, so I think it'll be fine for just the two of them to run around here, especially if they're older animals. Definitely for the Skeletosaurus though, because they are very cramped. I didn't realize how small this habitat was until I... And how big they... Oh no, one of our Sitakows has walked through the walls. Uh, let's put him back, for sure. Okay. Um, th yeah, this is for our Skeletosaurus. We have two of them. I These would definitely be like older animals that... Maybe they've been rehabilitated. That doesn't make sense, but you know, a lot of times birds in zoos, when they get older, they have kind of small habitats. I think that it's fine, though. Um, in here, this is actually empty. I imagine this would be for some small prehistoric insect. There are a couple habitats like this in the zoo that I just felt like it fit the environment, but we don't have any animals in the game that could go in there, so. Just to make it feel more like a real zoo, because in the game, obviously, it being early access, we only really have large animals right now, which is fine. Um, but yeah, okay, this habitat, I'm not sure how I feel about the safety here. I think it's fine if this, this is not going to be breakable glass, but it might be a little bit short. 
This is our Nile River habitat and what lives on the Nile River River other than the Spinosaurus. No. Anyway, yeah, we have it like a obelisk in here. This whole zoo lights up super cool at night. You can see I have all these lights that would normally be outside the render distance. Uh, yeah, well, here we have our Spinosaurus. I use the smooth pattern because one, it blends with the water very well and it's just so cool. I don't know why, I really like the smoother dinosaur designs. They feel more alive and real. Like sometimes I don't mind a crocodilian-esque creature, but generally that's cooler. So uh, we could head through this door to see the dilos better, but we'll actually loop back around to there. We're going to walk this way. I'll try to speed up this tour. I don't want this video to be longer than 20 minutes, but it's sometimes hard to tell. This feels a little bit unsafe, but maybe the Spinosaurus is more tame, or it's fine. What I actually did here, I built the entire zoo and then I put animals in afterwards with no plan for specific animals. Um, so that's why sometimes they feel like they don't fit. These plants are floating, that's a, that's a side effect of, I believe it's actually because of the water glitch. I don't know if you guys know the water glitch, but there's it doesn't work anymore, basically. And it just screws up the terrain and the whole safe out, which I did actually use the water glitch. It just was unsuccessful. So yeah, here we have our gate for the Congo section. This was actually one of the pictures that I leaked earlier while I was when I was building the suit, which I did build this whole thing in three weeks and in 24 hours, so more than I used to build. Uh, as you can see, by the way, we have two habitats in front of us, and then to our left, we'll head through this partially open air, partially indoor. I imagine it's it, if it rains, you'd stand under here, but I didn't build a roof for this whole area because then it would feel enclosed. This is a super dense jungle. What we have in here is a singular now pseudoceratops. I thought this was kind of neat because one, there's it's like in the real trailer for the early access for prehistoric kingdom and two we always see um ceratops seen in these big herds but i thought it was kind of neat that you'd have a solo one so yeah uh we can walk down to this area but what you can see in front of us that's actually the avery that we will avery that we'll get to later what we have here is archaeopteryx or microraptor i cannot remember which as you can tell we are speeding through this tour but to be honest there's not that many details to go over. Alright, looks like Archaeopteryx. Oh, he's sleeping. He's just sleepy. So we actually have two of them here, but they're both Archaeopteryx. It's because I didn't properly decorate. Okay, here's you can see a side effect of the water glitch. One, the water glitch creates like a really jagged edge to the water most of the time, and you can only get a little bit of water placed. But also, when you load back into the safe file, sometimes the train will jump out like this. So, this is a wall of like five glass panes, but it's down to just two that you can look into. Obviously, we don't have aquatic animals in the game, so that's all we got right now. But I imagine we'd have some little prehistoric fish in here. Kind of neat. Uh, and I didn't do too many guest buildings, as you'll be able to tell, but I did build just a couple of little kiosks right here. I think this is a pretty nice view. It would be a cool place to sit feels like a real zoo building. You can also look from here down into this aquatic habitat. And uh, you could head to the next section of the zoo from here, but we're not going to. We're gonna head through the other entrance because we still have some of the Congo to see. But I do like having multiple pathways to help avoid extra foot traffic. So this habitat is for is it for the lions? No, I moved the lions. The lions were originally in here. This is a... Oh! This is the Dino, isn't it? The Dinochirus. Dinochirus, not Dino. I've been playing the aisle too much. As you can tell, I use the foliage brush here, which is something I don't normally do. As you can tell, this... this I keep saying it, as you can tell. This fence is really just a backdrop. You're not meant to actually see it. Where is it? Uh, this sometimes like this when I wish we had a map in Prehistoric Kingdom. Okay, well, um, we'll see if we can find them when I do the cinematics. Hopefully it hasn't glitched into some other creature's habitat, or just walked out. 
It is a pretty large area though, so I think there's just one in here. Maybe I put two, but could be sleeping in any of these grasses. Wouldn't be able to find them. Oh well, there is a Dinochirus in there. And next we'll head up into this viewing tower where we have our apex predators of the zoo, that being the Acrocanthosaurus. I didn't feel like a Rex or anything fit into here, and also Acker's the animal that I'm least likely to use, but I really like it, especially this pattern. And Acro is just a really cool animal. And of course, it's Prehistoric Kingdom, so it has a fabulous design as well. And we have a pair of them in here. So, uh, yeah, that's that viewing tower. Any chance of seeing the Dinochirus? Looks like we won't. Sorry about that. Um, maybe we'll see him when we go back at nighttime, though. Alright, keep your eyes peeled on the left. Maybe we can see our now Pseudoceratops. Don't look like it right now. I do kind of like that they're hard to see, though, in the jungle. So, now we are technically still in the Congo section, but this is a little more wetlandsy. And we have this habitat for our small herd of paras. Technically, this is Karanosaurus in the game, but it's not a real animal, so... No, I'm kidding. It might be. Maybe. Uh, so anyway, yeah. Just a small herd. I imagine this habitat would continue farther back. Obviously, in the game, I had to wall it off somewhere. So anyway, we crossed this bridge. Safety is very important here. I don't know, maybe you can feed them. That'd be kind of cool. They are gigantic animals, though. This is definitely not safe. Um... Since I tried to build a zoo like, it's kind of built for the proportions of zoo animals because I've. I really like zoos, so it's kind of just in the back of my mind. But. Yeah, uh, what do we have here? This big habitat is for the Kamarasaurus, as you can see. But this is sort of supposed to mimic a giraffe feeding uh, platform thing. So you'd walk up here, and the sauropods could walk up and. Yeah, they're actually the perfect height. We have a very classical African savanna with those termite mounds and stuff. I didn't want to put too many sauropods, though, uh, because space, you know. I did give them the giraffe pattern, at least, though. Okay, so, I I know I said I was not going to do too many guest amenities, but I did build one little restaurant over here. With this very safe view into the river. And then we do have a chance to see our Sinotherium, but we had to put bars in the window because I imagine they're a lot like Buffalo, Cape Buffalo, where they might charge the windows. We have quite a large herd of them. This habitat kind of sits in the center of the savanna section, so it takes up a lot of space. They have plenty of room for, even though there's a bunch of them. Uh, they do have a dedicated viewing platform here, though, and we can see their this sort of open valley. This guy's stuck. A oh, well. And they have this, like, watering pool. It looks super neat. And I like that they sit there. Is he still stuck on that rock? No. Okay. So, continuing on. Sorry about the camera work. Prehistoric Kingdom doesn't have, like, a proper camera view mode. So it's the best we got. So here we have our Paraceratherium. These fences are kind of obstructive for the view in the game because it's two-dimensional, obviously. Well, technically not, but close enough. And, um, yeah, this is sort of supposed to mimic an elephant habitat because we have, like, a barn for them. We also have these things where elephants could reach their trunks up. Is it too tall? I'm just realizing it might be too tall. Okay, they might be able to reach it. It's a little bit tall, though. Anyway, yeah, we just have four of them in here. I like that they have this fountain that I built for them to sort of splash around in, because that feels like a thing big animals in the heat would like to have. And uh, they do have a little elephant barn here. So, yeah, we're just going to continue on. Here we have our Sinotherium and Pantheras. Should use the smile on, because I think that's the one that's actually in the park. So here you might get a chance to see them in the barn again, but mostly that's for isolation. So yeah, here this, uh-oh, uh-oh, one of our protoceratops is, you know what, I'm going to let him be because I don't even remember where they go in the park, because th it's been a while since I built this, well, like a few weeks, but, okay, so, um, 
Anyway, this is our Smilodon, I believe. Yes, yeah, Smilodon habitat. Built a lot like a lion habitat would be today. They have these, I imagine they could use like scratching posts. That's kind of cool. Maybe shouldn't have been the supports for the guest bridge, but um, it'll be fine. This area of the zoo is under construction. We'd have more animals there. I'm just going to walk this way. You can see this fence is really lazy. This whole zoo is, but I think for most builders, this would suffice. And this honestly did not take that long. I mean, it took like the time it takes me to build a small park in Evolution 2. Um, here you have one more chance to see the Sinotherium. Why don't I have... Uh, why don't we need steel bars here, but we did over there. Don't ask questions. So this actually will lead to Madagascar, but we still have a little bit more area to view. That being the aviary. Which, this was actually that tunnel in the Congo section that leads to the Savannah area. I'm trying to tell this very fast, as you can tell. So yeah, uh, what's in here? We don't actually have flying creatures in the game, so it's Velociraptor, because... I guess that makes it not an aviary. Well, I guess, okay, an aviary is just an enclosure for birds, right? So do we count this? Do we count most of these habitats as aviaries? I don't know. But anyway, I felt like they needed something they couldn't climb out of. And I actually had a really hard time containing them in here because um, they would climb underneath the river and escape. So, yeah, with that done, those are our Velociraptors. Let's head into the Madagascar area. So, we don't have proper trees to build stuff like what Madagascar really looks like. Uh-oh. You're glitched. Oh, they're getting stuck on the rocks, aren't they? Okay, I see. They can get stuck in this corner pretty easy. That's not good. Oh well. It's fine. The traversable area, could it use some work? Yeah, it's, it doesn't really matter though. Oh yeah, they found a way out. Okay. So yeah, there you go, Coelophysis Habitat, we get a better view in a second. But anyway, as I was saying, we don't have proper Madagascar trees, so I did the best I could to recreate the jungles of Eastern Madagascar. I couldn't really build anything for Western Madagascar at all. So, um, oh, here, I didn't actually do this well, but you can use the water trough to create, like, still water. That looks kind of cool. Um, so yeah, we just have this little habitat for our Coelophysis. Let's imagine, um, obviously they didn't live in jungles probably in real life, but, you know, I can see them, little herd of them running through. So, the Madagascar area is actually like one huge walkthrough biome uh, that you, you walk up here. Now, I did originally want to put a roof on here and have it be like it was a biodome, but... Uh, the whole goal of this zoo was to build it simply and fast and prove that it can be done. So if I built a, um, there we go, got the proper camera mode for touring, finally. Okay, so yeah, if I'd done that, it wouldn't have worked too well. So this is broken into three habitats. This one on the left is for a Ceratopsian. I can't remember which one. I believe it's it's not Triceratops. We've already had no Pseudoceratops. Ah, uh, Styracosaurus, right? Beautiful model. Anyways, uh, so there's two of them in here. I can't find the other one though. The issue is with all these plants being individually placeable in rocks. Most of the animals can't walk on them. In the center, this is where the Protoceratops was, wasn't it? Yeah. So this is where the Protoceratops was, because here's the other one. I have no idea how the other one first had to clip through this, then had to clip through this whole building, or just this wall, I guess. Uh, then all the way over here, and through this planters, and then walk. Oh well. I was going to turn off the rain, but it kind of fits the jungle here. It looks cool. So, then finally we have the, the Anasaura with their 
extremely long tails. I should have put them in the mountains now that I think about it, but I think they're fine here. And they look cool. There was water here. It got deleted. Probably part of that water glitch. Again, I think this is kind of a neat thing to have this elevated walkway through a multi-habitat uh, multi area. So yeah, welcome to the last section of the park. This is the mountains. First we have an iguanodon. At first this habitat looks really small, but uh, this habitat actually would continue. This is just one part of it. We only have a singular iguanodon here, but there would be more in the rest of the habitat that's kind of split into two areas. Maybe a daytime and nighttime area, maybe indoor-outdoor. But oh well. Here, this fence actually looking at now is way too low, but it's for our Dryosaurus. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of neat. You just get another opportunity to view them out here. This feels a little bit safer. I should have used a slightly taller fence down there, but it's fine. Then here's another under construction section, so there would be more mountain beyond this. Then we have this sunken down habitat. I did a lot of sunken down habitats because they're really easy ways to build. Carnivore habitats with lower fences that don't feel too obstructive and not have these super tall structures. So yeah, in here we have our lions. So they're made to be able to climb on top of rocks. The issues is they kind of just do that, which defeats the purpose of the pit. But I couldn't just cover it with rock texture. I had to cover it with rocks sometimes. And, and no matter how steep I make it, they seem to just climb on top of it. So obviously Prehistoric Kingdom is early access game. There's going to be lots of issues like that. It doesn't really bother me though, because to be honest, I don't spend too much time looking at the animals anyways. And they have a little cave in here. That's it for the... No, that's not it for the mountain section because we still have our Microraptor, if I can find them. Why? Okay, some more trees have spawned in here. The water and as well as other stuff caused a bajillion glitches here. But anyway, we have Microraptors because these trees, I know I didn't place this tree here. That was probably from a tree brush that I used over here or something. So yeah, this plaza is still under construction, but we do have... Dilos, nice chance to see them. The Dilos are super cool. And what's this? This is the um, the board for the donators to the zoo. As you can see, the the text is written out perfectly because I took my time with it. And we have all of you guys who commented on that post that I said I'd put your names on the donator board for a prehistoric kingdom zoo, and I did. You're welcome. Two vending machines, and we're back in. Okay. Early access game, guys. Don't think about it too hard. Um, yeah, thank you guys for touring this zoo. I will now put on screen some nighttime cinematics of all our dinosaurs. Thank you.